Good morning, Monday morning, heading now to Rothschild Boulevard in Tel Aviv for a marathon of meetings, starting with the great Amir Mizrach from Startup Nation Central, ex-Wall Street Journal, then meeting Shlomo Mervis from Intelligo, and several other meetings on Rothschild, back-to-back all day. Then tonight, meeting an old friend here locally for steak to catch up, big tech guy, good friend. It's going to be a great day, a chill day, but a great day. All in all, I'm excited about it. In other news, I just watched the Lemonade interview of episode 154. Amaze balls! What an amazing company! All right, here we go. We made it to Tel Aviv 20 minutes before my meeting, and on a scale of one to ten, when it comes to lucky parking, got a parking spot here. Rothschild Boulevard is right there. I gotta say, this is probably the luckiest I've ever been. It took me a couple of circles around here, but you do not find parking at Rothschild Boulevard, so it's gonna be a good day, I think. Pretty excited about that parking spot. Can you tell? Anyway, on a totally unrelated topic, I recently discovered via a couple of different places, including Casey's vlog and a couple of other people, Peter McKinnon's work on YouTube. Kind of a shame to say I have not followed him from the beginning, but if you do not watch Peter McKinnon on YouTube, I don't know if we could be friends. His work is art. Pure art. Highly recommend you watch, subscribe. I watched, I subscribed. I set up a notification for every single video he's gonna post ever because his work is just, it's beautiful. Peter McKinnon, check him out. All right, first meeting, 15 minutes. breakfast here on Rothschild Boulevard with an old friend. I know you're a little uh, humble and you don't like when I use words like legend and everything, but but having said that, come on, I mean, listen, can we agree, listen, you read, you know, Wall Street Journal is a pretty big deal. Yeah, listen, if I'm a legend, you're, you're a guru. Okay, listen, man, <laughs> call me that word one more time. Listen, the bottom line is, Amir has been working in this in the journalism space for 22 years. 22 years, all right, and we're not talking like, you know, some small blog. I mean, again, Wall Street Journal, where else did you work, what other publications did you work with? Jerusalem Post. Jerusalem Post. How many years were you there? I didn't know that. Uh, I, feel like told, uh-huh. I feel like you told me that last time you spoke, and I didn't know it back then, and I probably forgot. I started out, but you're, I started out in, in South Africa at the Mail and Guardian. Oh, I didn't know that either. Um, which is, I was an investigative journalist. So you're even more of a legend than I, than I knew. Okay. And then I, when I met Elia, I went to uh, the Jerusalem Post. I was there for about eight and a half years. Wow. So I started off on the internet desk, wow. and then I was uh, head of the news division. I did not know that. And then my last year there, I was the executive editor, meaning kind of looking over. You know Yakov Tetz? Well, Yaakov and I worked together for you. So his Yaakov's older brother was my roommate in Yeshiva. Okay, but I don't like this frame. Let me move this back. Yaakov is a legend. Yeah, he's a great guy. All right, so let's just talk. Let's skip the whole Wall Street Journal because that's for another time. Right now, what are you doing? You came back. You were in, you were in England. We're in, in, in London for almost four years. Right. Two years at the Wall Street Journal, uh, tech editor for Europe, Middle East, and Africa, including Israel and the Gulf. And, yeah. and then uh, a year and a half at a strategic PR firm where I worked on big tech clients, mostly in the Valley, but also in Europe. Awesome. Um, so we're over to the dark side. Journalism oh, to yeah, PR. For sure. Okay. For sure. Well, then you went, back the to the, you went back to the bright side now because now you're at Startup Nation at Central. Startup Nation Central. Okay. So I'm, I'm director of communication at Startup Nation Central, which is an NGO. We're uh, a non-profit, meaning we're for the ecosystem. We're completely devoted to the ecosystem. We have no LPs, no investors. We can actually do what we think is, 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 you know, is needed. So let me see if I can over oversimplify what Startup Nation Central is. And you correct me if this is wrong, okay? The way I see it, and I might be completely wrong, is there was this book called Startup Nation, which went viral in the traditional sense. Not, it went crazy. I mean, it translated into... How many languages? I don't even know. Yeah. Uh, you know, Startup Nation. Everybody knows Startup Nation. And then Saul and his wife, Wendy, said, okay, we have this unbelievable phenomenon that everyone's so interested in Startup Nation. Why don't we kind of leverage this to actually bring it down from, you know, here to actually help the ecosystem? And so you're bringing in delegations. You're bringing in unbelievable people into Israel under the Startup Nation, let's call it umbrella slash brand. And that is Startup Nation Central. Right. So I'm, I'm not exactly sure how, how it actually started. Um, but from where I see things right now, we do two major things. The first thing is we connect corporates, governments, organizations, farming cooperatives, energy companies, whatever it is, from all 
all over the world, and I mean all over the world, that really need it, to uh, innovators in Israel, to startups that can actually help them solve their problems. We don't have to divert them to any portfolio. We can really be objective. And then we put them together in a room, and we we help them kind of, you know, if there's POCs, contracts, m as innovation, whatever it is, we actually do business development for the ecosystem. Deliver real, real, tangible, right. tangible value. Right. The other thing that we're doing more and more of is we're trying to boost the Israeli ecosystem wherever we can. The, the major part of that is to try and help peripheral populations that are not represented in tech so much uh, get into uh, tech, build communities, uh, and go in and, and support uh, programs, government programs, NGO programs that try and bring in ultra-Orthodox, Arab Israelis, more women into the tech workforce. The way I see it is that the Israeli tech ecosystem is like a well. We have 100, 300 multinationals coming from all over the world, taking water out, and this water is doing amazing things all over the world. But unless that well is being replenished, the talent of it underneath. It's a great analogy. I think so. Did you I come up with that? Yeah. That's great, actually. That, I'm so, that, that really is great. I'm not kidding, actually. Um, okay, so fine. I, I mean, Startup Nation Central is somewhat of a phenomenon, I, I might say, because first of all, I mean, the team, Wendy, and, and just the whole team as a whole, I think, Eugene, is Eugene, Guy, unbelievable Karin, people. All high, amazing people. Amazing people. In addition to everything that you're doing, and you guys are doing a lot, you recently started a new initiative, which I literally just came across on social, which. And that is, you're starting, can we talk about this? Yeah. You're starting a new column on none other than Forbes.com under the umbrella of Startup Nation Central to, again, spotlight the innovators, the big names, and you bringing on massive names. And again, we can talk about it because they're already published, right? Like Uri Levine, the founder of Waze. Like Waze. I mean, this, yeah. you know, it's funny. Like, it's, I think forever, when people talk about Israeli tech, the first company they're going to mention is Waze, yeah. right? It's like, the, which is okay. I yeah, mean, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And can we talk about the other names that you brought on board or not yet? Yeah, let's not yet. Let's okay, so them. big, big names. Yeah. Yeah. Big names. You told me the names. Big names. And you know, there's no monetization of this, but the long, the long game is again to spotlight this ecosystem. Which I, you know, when I speak around the world, I say, you know, I don't know if we want to talk it, call it miraculous or call it just outrageous. But at the end of the day, given the size of this country and the region in which we reside, there is no logical explanation. You know, the amount of innovation and the caliber of innovation that we're seeing in this tiny little country, and that to me is what's most interesting. Hillel, you, 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 you need to to understand the way we. We also see that, and we completely agree with you, but, but we can't take that for granted. We really can't, because there is a shortage of human capital in this country that is getting bigger. We have to address this. There is also um, a lot of competition to start up nation art from all over the world. Look at the Nordics, Poland, places uh, that you wouldn't expect have a lot of programmers, a lot of PhDs, engineers that, that we need to... That's, that's good. We're up for the challenge. I think I, I, yeah. I, I, by the way, I, like, I actually like, you know, because a lot of people talk about how amazing I mean, that's all me. There are things, there are challenges. They're amazing. they're amazing, but they're challenges. All right, one more thing that I want to talk about. There's just endless things we can talk about, but I just want to talk, focus on one more thing, and that is, I guess, a good segue into, to, to this thing is what you just said is let's look at the data. Let's talk about, you know, let's not talk about abstract. Let's look at the data. And yeah, we have a challenge, and you guys are also somewhat of a data powerhouse, yeah. and you built a product yeah. called Finder, Finder, which is, you know, and I, I probably literally. I called it an innovation discovery platform. That's what it is. Platform. Okay, I like it. Yeah. It's a good ring to it. Yeah. Probably once a day someone says to me, you know, I'm looking for a job. How do I know what's out there? I'm like, hello, Finder. Yeah. It's free. Yep. You can access the entire Israeli tech database. Yeah. We have a research team of uh, 12 people that track the Israeli ecosystem in real time. We everything. have everything. So we have, well, not everything, but we try our best, right? So we have, um, right now, we're tracking some 6,000 currently active innovation companies, right? We're not, uh, they're not uh, service providers or, or outsourced app makers. Actual startups that have R&D algorithms, so actual innovation companies, hubs, accelerators, foreign investors. We're adding, no, 6,000 just the startups. Then we have hubs, accelerators, investors, angels. We just added a whole layer of angels. And now the next thing we're adding, which I think is super important, is tech transfer offices, right? This is wow. where the next generation of ideas are coming out of the big universities. By the way, we also have visibility into about four or 500 stealth companies, right? Only 
you we see that. That's awesome. So I can tell you the stuff that's coming out of the tech transfer offices, out of the academies, and out of Stealth is mind blowing. But again, we need to get more people involved in the tech ecosystem. That's, that's amazing. And there are, by the way, we should say, there are several people, players in this ecosystem that are very focused on bringing more talent. Like, you know, I want to give a shout out because I think it's a beautiful thing they're doing. Like Aleph, who said, you know, we will cover your all your costs. If you're an engineer and you want to work in Israel, we will literally be located. I love that. Yeah. Michael's kind of vision. But we, anyway. we also need to bring um, more foreign non-Jews with visas for a couple of years to work here, to start companies. All right, so we're going to do that in our follow-up interview next yeah. time because I want to hear about how you end on attacking that. But for, for my uh, viewers' ADD sake, I'm going to end the interview next. We're at nine minutes. But yeah, we can, we can talk about this for four hours. But in any case, all I can say, say yeah, this, this, we all have ADD today, don't we? You don't have ADD? I probably do. We all have ADD. Well, it's my biggest gift. It's a topic for another time. In any case, I'm just going to say on camera what we know, what we've talked about for the past hour is, you know, our goals are aligned. At the end of the day, we want to help this ecosystem scale. So it goes without saying, anything I can do to help you guys, again, without saying, whoever, Wendy knows it, you know it. What a fist bump. I like it. Look at this. The cool kids are doing now. Uh, good luck with everything. And yeah, let me know how I can help. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. I love car washes. What a day that was. First of all, there was the embarrassing, yet flattering, Jerusalem Post feature. Then there was a call with a guy organizing an amazing conference in AI called futureofai.com. Check that out right here. I'll be emceeing that event. In addition to that, a uh, large financial institution reached out today to ask me if I'd be interested in coming to their conference in New York in a couple of weeks. Everything's very up in the air right now. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but all in all, between my meetings today and all these opportunities that just came flying in, pretty happy with the outcome of the day. Tomorrow, prove. See you then. <laughs>